making yourself available for God. I pray that God will continue to use you mightily in Jesus' name. Uh, a welcome reminder. Last week, in continuation of our study of one, we started a study of verses 15 to 19. And if you can remember, our study is titled Prompt Obedience to the Call of God. And furthermore, we divided it into three sub -headings. Verses 15 and 16 we studied last week, titled, Called to Preach to Gentiles. Called to Preach to Gentiles. And then the second subheading, which is from verse 17, titled, Coached by the Holy Spirit. And the third subheading, which is verses 18 and 19, titled Confirmed by the Holy Spirit. Called, coached, confirmed. So we are going to continue from where we stopped last week. We are going to start to look at the second subheading. But before we do that, let us just have a, a word of prayer. Father, thank you, Lord, for bringing us together once again to learn at your feet. We pray, O oh Lord, that your Holy Spirit will come and take control of all that we are going to share together today. Let the hearts of the hearers, O oh Lord, be received made available for you as we continue now, O oh Lord. Everything that could hinder their heart being made ready, O oh Lord, Father, I pray that those things will be taken away now in the name of Jesus. Every spirit of buying and selling, we rebuke you now and we bind you in the mighty name of Jesus. Let there be focus, O oh Lord, now in the heart of all your children that are listening to me right now. And Father, the heart of understanding, the mind, O oh Lord, that will be determined to carry out your, your word, your instruction, give to each and every one now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, if you can open your Bible, let's look at that passage once again. Galatians in chapter 1. Let's quickly look at it again from verse 15 so that it can flow very well. 15 to 19. Galatians chapter 1, verses 15 to 19. But when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb, and called me by his grace to reveal his son in me that I might preach him among the heathen. Immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood. Neither went I up to Jerusalem to them which were apostles before me. But I went into Arabia and returned again unto Damascus. Then after three years, I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter and abode with him 15 days. But other of the apostles saw I none, save James, the Lord's brother. Prompt obedience to the call of God. Now we are looking at the second subheading that is coached coached 
by the Holy Spirit. Coached by the Holy Spirit. That is taught. Taught of the Holy Spirit. And we're looking at that verse again, verse 17. He says, Neither went I up to Jerusalem to them which were apostles before me, but I went into Arabia and returned again unto Damascus. Now we can see here that Paul Apostle was converted on the way to Damascus. He was converted. He received his conversion in a very special way on the way to Damascus. Now, after his conversion, the Lord himself prepared him for ministry. The Lord prepared him for ministry. And after his preparation, he returned to minister in nearby Damascus. The place where he was going to arrest the people of God, that was where he started his ministry. Paul did not bother to make any trip to Jerusalem where the apostles were. But he spent approximately three years in Arabia in a desert area conferring with God, praying, seeking the face of God. During these three years, Paul was bold enough to say to everyone that he was not taught by men, but he was taught by the Holy Spirit. He was not taught by men, but by the Holy Spirit. Rather than immediately traveling to Jerusalem to show himself, to tell everyone that I have arrived, I am now one of you, to start being given big title, he decided to start his ministry from that very place where he received his conversion. You see, many people are always quick to start something where if they think that, oh yes, after all, I've been leading prayer, I've been, led, I've been teaching Bible, I've been doing this, I've been doing that, because of that, yeah, yes, I'm, I'm I can, I can go now and start my own. Let such people learn from Paul. Rather than immediately traveling to Jerusalem to receive instruction from the apostles, to receive, to be ordinated, or to try to get one or two people to join him so that they can start a ministry. What did they do? He said, no. I will go to nearby Arabia. A wilderness, desert, a wilderness. A desert that stretched east of Damascus down to the Sinai Peninsula. That was where he went to, 
to seek the face of the Lord, to be matured for ministry, to develop the work that God himself has commissioned him to carry out. Now, let me tell you something. Our destiny is determined for us by God. It's not determined by us. I repeat that again. Our destiny is determined for us by God. We cannot determine our destiny by ourselves. So whatever there is ambition and there is mission. We have vision, mission and ambition. A lot of people always allow ambition to overcome them. And when they are overcome with ambition, they will say that they have a calling. And instead of them to, mash, to be matured, to serve a tutelage under the teaching of the Word of God, under the umbrella of the Holy Spirit, they always jump out. They always jump out and they think that they can determine their destiny by themselves. No, we do not choose the circumstances in which we are born. Nobody, we do not choose it. We do not choose our gifts and our dispositions. We do not choose it. Some of us may be long unconscious, unaware of our destiny. But when we become aware of our destiny, when we become conscious of our destiny, the best thing for us to do is to allow God to determine our move for us. We must not jump before we start to walk. We must not run when we should be walking, when we should be crawling. Paul never dreamed. He never dreamed of his destiny while he was sitting down at the feet of Gamaliel. So, we can go to any length to study, to do anything that we want to do but when we now become conscious of our destiny, then the best thing for us to do is to start following God, to start following the leading of God. Maybe we are taking steps by ourselves. Some of us have spent years in the wilderness before God fished us out of the wilderness before God took us out of the wilderness. Some of us came out of the wilderness with strong hand like Paul did. Some of us have been maligned, have been called names, even after spending years in the wilderness serving someone who, like Gamaliel, who did not even know anything about the kingdom of God. 
But when it is time in the eye of the Lord, in the timing of the Lord, God has a way of doing his work. He has a way of talking. He has a way of moving. He has a way of doing his work the way no man can do. Paul spent time studying. And the, the best school of those days, and that was at the feet of Gamaliel, Instead of studying at the feet of the Holy Spirit, he was studying at the feet of Gamaliel. Because he thought Gamaliel was the real thing at that time. While he was harassing the Christians, he never knew that he was working for the devil. He never knew that he was serving the devil. Many, many people are in places today, so-called places where they call, some of them they call churches. But in those places, they are still serving the devil, but they didn't know. They are contributing to the development of the of the kingdom of the devil indirectly unknowingly unconsciously to some people until God opened their people's eyes they have the tendency to continue going that way following after people who they think are doing things the way God wants it to be done. Many people are following magicians instead of following the miracle worker. Instead of following Jesus Christ, the miracle worker, they are following magicians. Many people determine the churches they will go to by the number of people in that church. Ah, it's a big church. Yes, it's a big church. But how do you know the spirit that is working in their midst? How do you determine that? How superb, how robust is the word of God that you are hearing there, that they are teaching you there? What are the things you can lay hold of that these are the lessons that I learned from the word of God? Going to a place, putting fear into your mind, assuring you that if you don't do this, you don't do this, you cannot do this. And you have never behaved like the Berean. You have never thought that, okay, let me just get back home and check. Is there anywhere in the Bible where this is written? And you continue following in that wilderness until one day. Like Saul of Tarsus, until one day. Now, the secret of the kingdom of God was gradually, gradually catching up with Saul. Saul did not know. He never knew. He thought he was being zealous for God, harassing children of God. Many, many, many people today are being harassed by some so-called people, so-called pastors, being harassed by some so-called prophets, being harassed by some so-called seers. They will put fear into their mind. 
and they will tell them that the only way out is for them to bring some money to them. They use different methods. Some will tell you to, to do different things. I don't want to start saying it here. Some of you have been to those type of wilderness places. You know what I'm talking about. But thank God for freedom. Thank God for freedom. Thank God for deliverance. And because of freedom and deliverance that you have received from God, you can sit down and learn from the feet of the Holy Spirit and you can see those people, you can see the secret of what they were teaching, the error. Everyone, every Christian has some divine call. You, if you are a Christian, you are born again, you have some divine call. The revelation of Christ came to Paul. Why? So that Paul can make Christ known. And that is a divine call for every Christian. So that you can make Christ known. Paul was not called to spread his own religious notions, religious ideas. He was not to teach a doctrinal Christianity. His calling was to show Christ to people. To show Christ to people. He was not called to start making merchandise of the children of God. We did not read in the Bible anywhere that Paul even had a house. We did not read anywhere in the Bible. His job, his calling was to make Christ no, to showcase Christ to the whole world. And that is the job that each and every one of us that are Christians must engage in. That is the job we should be doing. And we should be doing it not only by our words. Some people, they know how to do it very well with their words. Some people can preach to you from Genesis to Revelation. But when you move closer to them, their lifestyle, their lifestyle, their life has nothing to show for all the words that they are speaking. So for every one of us, we must leave Christ. We must leave Christ. So that men everywhere that we are, whether in our place of work, whether in our houses, whether in our neighborhood, we must leave Christ. Whether in our family, we must leave Christ. So that everyone that comes into contact with us will say Christ in us. That is your calling, my brother. That is your calling, my sister. That is your calling, my friends that are listening to me tonight. Live Christ. Let your life show Christ. So that people, when they see you, they will see Christ in you. You can sing and sing beautifully. You can preach and preach nicely. You can pray and pray thunderously but you must let your life reflect all what you are saying 
don't let people see you as a butterfly. Don't let people see you as a chameleon. Don't let people see you as a masquerade. In your life, show Jesus Christ. And that is why you find these days, you know, when we go to places and we, we are offered things, food, drink, even in a Christian gathering, you will find that even if somebody has blessed the food and they drink, some people will still bless it on their own before they eat it. No trust again. No trust. No confidence. No trust. Because people have proved themselves so many times that they must not be trusted. They hide evil in their hearts and they are showing something different in their faces. So, from today, let us learn from Paul. Let Christ be revealed in us. So that, you see, Paul, before Paul could preach the word, he received a revelation of Christ. Not only on the way to Damascus, but that period that he spent in the desert of Arabia, he received a revelation of Christ in his own person. In his own person. If we do not reveal Christ by the type of lives that we are living, if people that know you know that you are a hypocrite, your husband, your wife, your co-workers, your friends outside the church, if they know you and they see you as a hypocrite, all the Bible that you will be reading to them, all the tracts that you will be sharing, that you will be giving to them, will count for nothing. It will count for nothing. Because what they can see in you does not show that even you have had an encounter with Christ. So if our conduct is glaringly inconsistent, openly inconsistent, you can only deceive some people for some time. You cannot deceive them all the time. Judgment will catch up with you. And that is why it is necessary for us to be careful, to beware. Beware of what you are doing. Don't live a, an inconsistent Christian life. You are a Christian, a different person when you are in church, a different person when you are with fellow church members, but a different person when you are with your co-workers, when you are with your friends outside the church. Let us start changing from today. Let us start acting like Christ. Let us start acting like Christ. If we act like Christ, the silent influence that our living of that our way of living 
will have on other people will be very powerful. It will be very powerful. It will be much more powerful than standing in front of the congregation and preaching to them from the pulpit. Do not allow anything to make you start behaving like you don't know Christ. If you know Christ, let it start showing in your in your in your behavior, in your conduct. You remember what Peter what Paul said in that passage? Paul said. I did not go to Jerusalem immediately. I did not go to Jerusalem immediately. I did not go to consult with the apostles there. I did not go there to be instructed by them in regard to the revelation that I have got. You see, this statement is to show us that in no sense at all did Paul derive his commission from man. He did not derive his commission from man. He was not commissioned by any man. He, he used a word, a word there. He said to them that were apostles before me. He said I did not go to them. You see, this implies, this shows us that Paul already, even without being given a, the title of an apostle, already regarded himself to be an apostle of Christ. He regarded himself to be an apostle of Christ. He said this, if you look at that statement, he said they were apostles before me. That means they have been apostles before I become an apostle. So he, 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 it was not it was not a a crime for him to 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 to, to tell us that he is an apostle. No, it's not a crime for him. He is saying that the same original authority that made them to be called apostle is the same original authority that has that he has also received and because of that he is also qualified to be called an apostle you see let me tell you you do not need anybody at all to give you any title before you can do the work of God. You do not need anybody's approval before you can do the work of God. Before you can be in the service of God. The moment you become a Christian, you have been commissioned. You have been commissioned. The word of God says, Go ye into the world. Go ye. That is your commission. That is your work. That is what you should be doing. Don't wait for big title. Don't wait for big title. All the apostles that were in Jerusalem, 
they remain in Jerusalem after the ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ. So, many people believe that Jerusalem, as at that time, was the principal place of authority. It was the principal place of authority. But look at Paul. Paul said, but I went into Arabia. That was, like I explained to you, south of Damascus. South of Damascus. So you can see, the line between Arabia, the desert of Arabia, and Syria, was very close. was very close. It was, it was actually, according to the Bible, geography, the Arabia, where he went to, was the Arabian, it was the Syrian, was part of the Syrian desert. We do not know the circumstances of his journey. We do not know. We do not know what prompted his journey. But one thing that we do know is that instead of going to Jerusalem, he decided to go there to the place and spend time alone with God. So, for tonight, I want you to know something here. During that three years that he was in Arabia, Paul was doing the work of God. He was preaching the gospel until God directed him to come back to Damascus. Not only Damascus, but even the adjacent regions of Damascus. He went to all of these places, preaching the gospel. Preaching the gospel. And by the time he came back to Damascus, everyone knew that truly he has already been taught of the Holy Spirit. He has been coached by the Holy Spirit. Now my question for you is this. Can you say that since the time that you have been converted, since the time you have become a Christian, since the time you had an encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ, can you say that your life has changed. Can you say that your conduct has changed? Can you say that the word that you are speaking out of your mouth reflects that of a true child of God? Can you say that since the time you have had an encounter with Christ, you have become an evangelist you have become an apostle you come everywhere you go you seize an opportunity to preach the gospel to share jesus christ and when they see your lifestyle are people ready to listen to you are they ready to hear what you want to say or will they say oh, look at him we just had a so 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 thing together. We just did so 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 thing together. So how can you now come to tell me that what we have done together, you are now condemning it openly? Can your life really encourage people? I want you to check out 
your life. Check out your life. You know, when we go to the hospital, or when doctors, in fact, these days, when we want to enter the church, there is something that they normally use to check our temperature. When doctors want to test somebody, if they want to determine whether the person is ill or not ill, they check their temperature. Your temperature says a lot about you, about how your, your body is functioning, about how your body is feeling. Your temperature. So can you really say now, truly, truly, that if God measures, if the Holy Spirit measures your temperature, the Holy Spirit will not find that something is truly wrong with your Christianity. I want you to go to the Lord in prayer tonight. We are stopping here tonight. Next week, we will continue from here. But I want you to go to the Lord tonight. Check it out. Check it out. Check it out. Jesus Christ told us in the in the revelation, he said, if I put you in my mouth, you are neither hot nor cold, he said, I will spit you out. He said, it is better for you to be hot or to be cold. If you are hot, then there is still a way of treating you. If you are cold, there is a way of treating you. But if you are neither hot nor cold, Jesus Christ said, I will spill you out of my mouth. So there is no room for lukewarmness. No room for lukewarmness. In the kingdom of God, there is no room for lukewarmness. There is no room for inconsistency. Let your lifestyle agree with your calling. They call you Christian. They know you as a Christian. Let your lifestyle reflect Christianity. Let your lifestyle reflect Christianity. If you are not living right, you can change that today. You can correct that today. You can pray today and ask God to give you the grace to shed all the load that you are carrying. All those excess baggage. All those load that will not allow you to rapture. You better pray today that God give me the grace to shed all these loads. Sometimes it could be painful. But with the grace of God, the pain will not disturb you. The pain will not make you not to be able to take a decision. You have to take a decision tonight. You have to take a decision tonight. That God, give me the grace. I want to clean out this table. This dirty table. I want to clean it out. I want to clean it out. Give me the grace. To do it, O oh Lord. Paul went to, the, to Arabia. Which is part of the Syrian desert now. now. He went there for three years. When he was fully parched, when he was parched out completely, he started preaching there. People saw him. They knew that something has happened in his life. They started listening to him. He started sharing God, Jesus Christ with them. And then, God now said, okay, move back to Damascus now. Have you ever asked yourself, why did he not remain in Damascus and start preaching the gospel? Have you ever asked yourself, why did he not go to Jerusalem and announce himself to, the, to the, those that were apostles before him that I am the newest member He knew that when it was time, God himself will announce him. 
God himself will announce you. You continue to serve God. Continue to serve God. Continue to do the work of God. God himself will announce you when it is time. Don't run when you should be walking. Don't jump when you should be crawling. Or when you should be running, don't jump. Take your lesson from Paul's life today. Make sure that you are coached by the Holy Spirit. Not by anything that is you are hearing. Not by anything you are hearing outside the Holy Spirit. Make sure you are coached by the Holy Spirit. Make sure that you are coached by the Word of God. Make sure that you spend time with God. Spend time in the presence of God. Learn of God. Study of God. Like the Bereans. Don't wait until we come together like this before you read your Bible. Always read your Bible. Study your Bible. Study your Bible. Read your Bible. We have been studying from Galatians chapter 1. I know that many people, after we finish now, we just close their Bible and that's it. They will never go back and read the passage again. The little time we have together to study is not enough. When you, when at your own time, open that passage again. Let the Holy Spirit speak to you. Correct what you need to correct in your life. Sweep everything clean. It is never too late. It is never too late. This is still the time of grace. Jesus Christ can call. Don't let him find you in a compromising position. Don't let him find you in a position that will make a shipwreck. Or whatever you are saying that you believe. I pray that the Lord will give you the grace. So that you can go on and do what God requires of you. He knows you. He sees you. He knows your heart. Your heart is too deep for me to see. But it is not too deep for the Holy Spirit to see. Surrender everything to Him. The Bible says the heart of man is, is wicked, desperately wicked. Said, Who can know it except God? That thing that you are hiding in your heart, expose it today. Show it to God today. Tell God to give you the grace so that you can sweep it out, so that you can be acceptable to God. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen.